Hi, my name is Henry Segerman. This is Dodecahedron Chains 1 and Dodecahedron Chains 2. So this is two variations on the same idea. So let me talk about Dodecahedron Chains 1 first. So this is actually three separate uh, chains of uh, ten dodecahedra each. Uh, so this is, uh, and, and they fit together like this. Um, so this is a precursor to the 30-cell puzzle, which was made from uh, five uh, pieces like this, so these pieces of these chains. Um, and as I explained in the video for the 30-cell puzzle, uh, where these come from is the 120-cell, uh, it's one of the four-dimensional polytopes, and there are these chains of ten dodecahedra, I've got a pipe cleaver in here that shows uh, the path of one of those chains. So you have a dodecahedron here, and then you have a, a face of the dodecahedron, and you go through that face into the next dodecahedron, and then you go through the opposite face into the next dodecahedron, and so on, and you come back around after uh, you go through ten dodecahedra. Um, and uh, so it turns out that uh, so the, the one that I've got highlighted in red here um, is like one of these uh, these bigger chains here, and it wraps around another chain of dodecahedra, this one in here, and uh, there's a, another uh, chain of dodecahedra, and do dodecahedra that wraps around both of those two, um, and you get this uh, interesting uh, fidget toy. Um, now, when we were trying to uh, put this together, we actually wanted to put more than uh, just these two big chains around the, the central core chain, and it turns out that, uh, well, we, we ran into, into problems. So when printing something like this out, you have to uh, arrange the 3D model in your 3D modeling program um, in such a way that if you've got disjoint, uh, or if you've got pieces that are supposed to be uh, disjoint, then you have to arrange them so that they don't touch each other somehow. Um, and this is uh, not necessarily so easy. If, so if they, if they do touch each other, then when it's printed out, they'll just be fused together and you won't be able to move anything. Um, so so we, we actually couldn't figure out a way to get more than two of these big chains in here. Um, in principle, you should be able to fit five of them in, uh, at least uh, in, in contact with each other, but it's not clear that you can actually then move them apart. So, um, so the solution to that problem in the 30-cell puzzle was just to, well, we can't print uh, the whole chain, uh, all five chains around here, um, but if we sort of just remove some pieces, so if we remove these these four biggest chunks, um, then, uh, and that's what we did here, then you get something which can be uh, printed separately, so they're all separate from each other, not interlinked, and then we can put them back together again, and that's that's the 30-cell puzzle. Um, so that's where that came from. Um, there's, uh, let's see if we can put it back together again. So there's, um, there's actually uh, two interesting configurations for this. Let's see, where is it? It's not so easy. There we go. Um, so that, that's that's the, the configuration where you've got the core chain and then these two big guys around it which are next to each other and you can just move this uh, one click around somehow. There we go. Um, so there's another interesting configuration where these two big guys are uh, two clicks around from each other. Um, there's actually a third interesting way that these fit together um, is sort of a surprising uh, uh, way that they work. Um, that's a secret for now. We're, we're doing something with that later and we'll show you what happens next um, <clears throat> at some later point. Um, so what's the idea with uh, dodecahedron chains 2? So um, so the way that this guy is, uh, is printed out, we've got these three chains. Two of them are the same as each other and then there's this one core chain. But in the, the 120 cell, there's no uh, distinction between the three of them. And so the question was, is there a way to change the way that we project from um, four-dimensional space to three-dimensional space? So we're using stereographic projection. Um, change the way that we're projecting uh, so that it make, makes these three chains symmetric with each other. And uh, this is the best that we can do. Um, so it looks like the three chains here just take them apart. Um, it looks like they're identical. It turns out that they're actually not. They're very slightly different. Um, and the difference actually is that they're sort of rotated around the axis by, um, I guess, a fifteenth of two pi. So one third of uh, uh, the uh, symmetry of the, the dodecahedron here. So 
And how do you see this? Well, so if you look down the axis here, you see that this guy, um, it's got a sort of a, a face tilted a little to the left, and this edge is tilted a little to the right from the, the, the axis of symmetry. This one is the other way around, and you say, okay, well, I could just turn this over. Well, there's kind of a handedness uh, uh, to the whole object that means that doesn't work. And this guy is uh, face on. This guy is mirror symmetric, so they're, they're all actually slightly different. Um, so it was a little disappointing that uh, that uh, you can't actually, or it doesn't seem that you can you can put these these guys in uh, in a perfectly symmetrical configuration. I can't seem to get them back together again. It's always a little tricky. There we go. Um, so there you go. This is uh, Dodecahedron chains one and Dodecahedron chains two.